Good evening. I hope you're keeping safe in the midst of the pandemic. Welcome to Nationwide. I'm Ruth Aguela. President Mohamed Buhari has approved the reconstitution of the board of the Nadra National Petroleum Corporation after the expiration of the term of the board members appointed in 2016. Members of the new board, according to um, a release by Special Advisor to the President of Media and Publicity, Femi Adishino, are Mohamed Lawal, Northwest, Tajuddin Umar, Northeast, Adamu Mahmoud Atta, North Central, Senator Magnus Abe, South South, Dr. Stephen D.K. South East, and Chief Pius Akinye Lure South West. The new board will be in place for three years. In the meantime, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation regrets to announce the demise of its immediate past group managing director, Dr. Mekanti Kachalaburu, Friday night. Lydia Samson has that report. Dr. Mekan Tibaru was the 18th Group Managing Director of the NNPC, a consummate mechanical engineer who steered the affairs of the corporation from July 4, 2016 to July 7, 2019. A statement by the NNPC Group General Manager Group Public Affairs, Dr. Kenny Obatero, announced the passing on of Dr. Mekan Tibaru after a brief illness in a hospital in Abuja. The release says NNPC Group Managing Director Meli Kiari expressed shock over the sudden death of Dr. Mekan Tibaru describing him as a man of exemplary character and disposition. Dr. Baru was 60 years old. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. And President Muhammad Buhari condoles with family, friends and professional colleagues of the former group managing director of Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Dr. Mekan Tika Chalaburu. The president, in a statement, commiserates with government and people of Bauchi State, management and staff of NNPC over the passing of the former GMD, who worked very hard to initiate reforms in virtually all departments of the corporation, bringing it up to speed with global trends and best practices. President Buhari acknowledges Dr. Baru's contributions to ensuring stability in the oil sector in Nigeria with a more guaranteed supply and predictable price regime that weakened unscrupulous parallel marketers, especially during festive seasons. The president prays that the almighty God will receive the soul of the departed, grant eternal rest and comfort all those who mourn him. Let's bring you an update on COVID-19. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has announced 387 new cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. Increasing the total number of confirmed cases to 9,302. Of the 387 new cases, 254 are in Lagos, 29 in FCT, Jigawa has 24, Edo 22, Oyo 15, Rivers 14, Kaduna 11, Borno 6, Kanu 3. Plateau, Yobe, Gombe and Bauchi all have two cases each. Ondo State has one case. Lagos now has a total of 4,377 cases, followed by Kanu with 942, while FCT has 564 confirmed cases. 2,697 patients have been discharged so far, with 261 deaths recorded so far. Well, as countries and economies across the world slowly reopen, President Muhammad Buhari is optimistic that Africa, which was the last to experience the coronavirus, will eventually flatten the curve. The optimism was expressed in an article in the Newsweek magazine. Some may say it is too early, that a crisis still too deep, and the recovery too distant to dwell upon the future. But that is wrong. In terms of global crisis, it is critical to think of the life after and how, through the adversity, we can now refashion the world around us. President Muhammad Buhari, in the article for the African continent, expressed that in this new post-coronavirus age, Nigeria and Africa more broadly wish to benefit the world, not be a drag on its resources or seemingly forever in need of aid. 
What we need now, the president says, is for the vision of others to match that of Africa, already positioned to play a critical role in the remodeling of a post-coronavirus world that centers around manufacturing. For many lost decades, Africa's manufacturing moment has been on the launch pad, but never leaving it. But this time, the president says he is convinced it can be different. He noted that the continent has seen the West transform to a service-based economy, with much of its factory production relocated primarily to Asia, which has led to the creation of homegrown consumer goods from countries such as South Korea and China that are enjoyed around the globe as widely as are their Western equivalents. President Buhari stressed that it is simply untrue to think that jobs that build the goods of today once departed from the West to Asia can never return. What is true is that no country or continent has a permanent monopoly on manufacturing goods. However, the president believes the continent is positioned to seize the opportunity from these trends and in turn benefit the world. Nigeria as a major global oil producer, have finally established a first private oil refinery, which is also one of the largest in the world. The Mambila power plant finally unlocked for completion after a successful decision by the International Court of Arbitration in Paris earlier this year removed impediments with the hope to electrify the homes of some 10 million people in the country. The nation, he explained, can now move forward with road, rail and power station construction thanks to close to a billion dollars of funds stolen from the country, which has now been returned to the country. Nigeria already has and seeks to deepen further its relations with other Commonwealth countries, particularly in the interest of trade and the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which was signed by the president to bind the continent in mutual growth together for the first time. The president notes that Africa is an opportunity for all and a threat to no one. He says, and I quote, We do not seek to grow our manufacturing capabilities in order to grant ourselves a seat at the table of some new great geopolitical game, but rather to play our part as partners in development. End of quote. Let's look at all the issues. The need for all hands to be on deck is important for African Development Bank, chaired by Dr. Adishino Akiwumi, to stay at the unveilable height. This is the message of some African leaders in a release jointly signed by 15 former African presidents, including Olushagun Abosanjo of Nigeria, Boni Yayi of Republic of Benin, Hal Maria. Mariam Desalem of Ethiopia and John Kufu of Ghana to show their solidarity for Dr. Adishino, who had been accused of violating the bank's code of ethics by the so-called whistleblower. The leader said any form of destruction should be avoided for the bank at this critical time when Africa is battling with COVID-19. Dr. Adishino, who had been cleared of the 16 allegations leveled against him, has already announced $10 billion crisis response facility to support African countries launched $3 billion to fight COVID-19 and provided fund worth $3 billion to support women in Africa. The Nigerian private sector coalition against COVID-19 has donated an equipped isolation center to Niger state government towards fighting COVID-19 in the state. Governor Abubakar Sani Bello, who inaugurated the facility located at the Hajj camp in Mina, applauded the initiative. Let's hear from Suleiman Kodogi. The Nigerian private sector coalition against COVID-19 is a joint initiative of leading private sector leaders and the Central Bank of Nigeria launched to support the government in the fight against COVID-19 in Nigeria. Items donated include 100 beds, 100 hospital overhead tables, mobile x-ray machine, and 1,000 personal protective wares, among others, worth millions of naira. Governor Abubakar Sani Bello appreciated the initiative and assured of continued partnership as well as effective use of the facilities provided. You can't just produce children and you allow the uh, society to take care of your responsibility. If you have the ability and capacity to produce children, 
the must have the ability and capacity to take very good care of them and give them the required parental guidance. And that is my stand on this. We'll make sure we take care of them. Uh, soon we're working on a policy that will ensure that uh, everyone has the opportunity to go to school. The governor noted that the isolation center will be put to use for the Almageris returned back to the state from other parts of the country for medical examination before uniting them with their respective families. In Mina, Suleiman Kodogi, NTA News. The last one year has been a period of reformation in the Nigerian Senate, a change that the actors themselves believe has redefined the Nigerian representative democracy by virtue of the nature of legislative and executive relationship. Ignatius Unko highlights the role of the Senate in the fifth year of the Buhari administration. Eleven days after the swearing-in of President Muhammadu Buhari, the elected members of the National Assembly were inaugurated. With, with consultations and calculations were made, goals were weighed and strategic decisions taken at the inception of the Ninth Senate. And the resolve was to move Nigeria forward through a mutual and working relationship among institutions of government, but with observance of separation of powers as provided in the Constitution. The first point of convergence with the executive was the screening of ministerial nominees. 43 of them were forwarded by President Muhammadu Buhari 14 days after the National Assembly inauguration, and all of them were confirmed after a painstaking screening. And that was the springboard that enabled the timely takeoff of the presidential cabinet, with more than 30 other appointments confirmed afterwards. The Senate continued with its patriotic disposition when it gave accelerated passage to the 2020 budget less than three months after it was presented by President Muhammadu Buhari, thereby reverting Nigeria's budget to January-December cycle. For this budget, for us to be able to tell Nigerians that we have excelled, oversight function is very, very, very important. I believe that this bill is tailored to meet the critical needs of the country at this point of our democratic evolution. We have given them the budget by passing it. We have given them the finance bills. We have given them the public procurement amendment bill. The role of the National Assembly in the sustenance of Nigeria's democracy through lawmaking was clearly understood by the legislators. Vivid and strategic, the Senate appeared to be firing on all cylinders to improve Nigeria's economy. Passage of bills that will shore up Nigeria's revenue was top on its agenda. The Deep Offshore and Inland Basin Act Amendment Bill, three Public Procurement Act Amendment Bills, and Finance Bill 2019 were passed and loan requests approved. Consultations as one of the characteristics of representative democracy in the last one year has been a major feature of the Ninth Senate. Series of meetings have been held involving the executive and civil society organizations, some to resolve industrial disputes between unions and government, to review government policies and bills, and lately on the COVID-19 pandemic. In appreciation, President Muhammadu Buhari, in his communication to the National Assembly on Thursday, 29th of May 2020, commended the legislators for their commitment. Let me seize this opportunity to express my deep gratitude for the patriotism, cooperation, and support of the leadership and distinguished members of the Senate in our collective efforts to amend the Appropriation Act 2020. Mr. President is occupying an office, and that office is for all Nigerians, irrespective of whether they are APC, they are PDP, or whatever. In the past, the machinery of governance has been hampered by delay in the passage of annual budgets and confirmation of executive appointees, a story the Ninth Senate is rewriting. Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Let's head to Lagos to join Jennifer, who is already standing by, to bring us more reports on Nationwide. Jenny? Thank you, Ruth. Now, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu has dedicated his first year in office to frontline workers in the battle against the coronavirus pandemic. Nosa Osula reports that the governor also virtually inaugurated 18 projects in commemoration of his first year in office at another ceremony held at the Lagos State Government House, Alausa Ikeja. The governor, while honoring workers in the health sector, who have been the frontliners in the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic, 
promised to improve on the facilities in the health sector. We completed 25%, which is one-fourth of the four-year tenure that the Gaussians have given to us. We're indeed excited, we're grateful, we know that where we are, um, there's a whole lot that we can do, and so we keep checking ourselves. The governor stated that while it was not possible to take the risky part of the job away, it is absolutely necessary to make provisions for a robust compensation plan that would make the health workers feel appreciated, considering the risk they are always exposed to. We're not out of it yet. We're not even sure we've reached the peak yet. But as we go along, they say delay is denial. We certainly cannot wait until when it's over before we begin to achieve, before, before we begin to act acknowledge our own. Meanwhile, at the inauguration of the projects, which include a concrete jetty with shoreline protection at Ikurudu, rehabilitation, upgrading and construction of road projects at Shomolu, Mushi and Badagri, over 500 houses and apartments in various parts of the state and construction of classroom blocks in both primary and secondary schools in different local government council areas of the state. Governor Son Wolu said even though the last four months have been very challenging in view of the COVID-19 pandemic, governments remain committed to the greater Lagos vision. In Lagos, Nusa, Usula. NCA News. And to a fire outbreak, the source of the fire that raised Olaleye Market in Shomolu area of Lagos to the ground this Saturday morning is yet to be identified. Olumide Ugutola, who visited the market, reports that no life was lost and no injury was sustained. Hello, Olumide. Thank you, Jennifer. For some time now, Lagos has been a bit quiet in the area of disaster until this morning when emergency responders were alerted that Olale Market in Shomolu area of Lagos State was on fire. As I talk to you now, everything inside the market has been completely destroyed. The pains in the heart of property owners who are just like other Nigerians, struggling to sustain their livelihood as coronavirus affects the global economy can best be imagined. Eyewitness account says the prompt response of the fire service authorities prevented the spread of the inferno to other areas. But you just help by who? What did happen? Is it bomb or not? You just come across. You have to come and see the light. Too much. Nobody can face it. We run. The only thing you just know is that you just see fire and after uh, to two. There's no light. There's no light that can cause anything. Nobody in the market has seen in the market. Then when the market is, go is going, when the fire is going on, we try to locate the uh, uh, security to, co to come and open the market for us so that people will rescue some uh, uh, their goods. But the security said that they are, the kids not with him. It was probably because the the whole line was in darkness while the shop was locked. But maybe after the um, the uh, electrical uh, the PCN brought lights, maybe there was a spark from one of the shop which was identified to be a computer shop down the last line. Well, we are appealing to the government to come to our aid. This is our source of income. As at the time of this report, the cause of the fire is still unknown. In Lagos, Olumide Gotola, NT News. Thank you, Olumide. For more on Nationwide, stay tuned, but we'll take a break now. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. We have observed the lockdown. 
We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus, but we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Ah, I say tomorrow is day on. What's your tomorrow? Uh, community meeting now. Huh? You know they're here, Abby? Now, Beggy. See, if we meet for my house, Inside Palon, then go no. This uh, COVID-19 is not a choice to play. They don't want to send it to the new secretary. We to do one for WhatsApp or, or for Skype or even on Zoom. Hmm? Or, or we just will wait. I will not negotiate uh, uh, this uh, social distancing. It is not negotiable. Yeah. Mm. Not every infected person shows symptoms, but every infected person is contagious. Avoid large gatherings and self-isolate if you think you might have come in contact with a carrier. Your safety and the safety of others is in your hands. This message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Fund. Thanks for staying tuned. For many decades, Africa and indeed Nigeria have been confronted with leadership challenges. While many believe that African leaders lack the right values to drive development, others are of the view that the followers are also not playing the expected roles. It is against this background that the Nigeria Prize for Leadership organized the first national leadership dialogue with the theme, Rethinking Leadership, Vision, Creativity and Capacity of a Transformer. Doin Dia reports. Africa, a continent blessed with abundant resources, yet bedeviled by snail pace development, most of which are a result of leadership. Discussions of this webinar extra the pre colonial and post colonial era, all of which have a mix of the military and democratic rule to address the leadership crisis in the country. Experts say there is the need to come up with policies that will engender national cohesion and integration as well as build system that foster peace, justice and equity. Everybody thinks that to make the country better, you have to point at the sitting president, you have to point at the sitting governor, you have to point at the sitting chairman of the local government, and of course, national level. Yes, politics has a role to play. But go to places in the society that need to be taught that whatever you are doing, no matter how good or how bad it is, it has impact on you and the society. Discussions at this event are of the view that there must be a clear definition of leadership responsibility and carry everyone along Nabuja, Dui, Dia, NT News. The Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has condemned the killing of Nigerians by bandits in communities in Sabumburinan local government of Sokoto State. A statement by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, said it was shocking that terrorists operating as bandits would commit mass murder in peaceful communities where innocent citizens were engaged in agrarian life without posing threat to anyone. Sadia Umar Farouk, while lamenting the displacement of innocent citizens from their homes, directed the relevant agencies of the ministry to swiftly commence action and work in collaboration with the appropriate agencies of the Sakoto state government in providing much-needed relief to survivors of the attack. 
Still in security matters, Niger State Government has inaugurated a 15-man state community policing advisory committee to check insecurity bedeviling the state. Governor Sani Bello, who presided over the inauguration at the government house, Mina, says the essence of the committee is to have a robust system starting from the ward level. Suleiman Kodogi reports. The current security challenges bedeviling Niger State. The integration of the committee could be seen as the right step in the right direction towards complementing government's efforts in seeking solution to the minas. Integrating the committee, Governor Abu Bakr Sani Bello said the best place to combat crime is the grassroots level, expressing optimism that with the committee in place, the narrative will change for the better. The Inspector General of Police, Muhammad Abu Bakr Adamu, represented by the DIG Training and Development Force Headquarters Abuja, Lawal Shew, said the professionalism of the police has led to the successful implementation of the long-awaited community policing initiative that has been in the pipeline for a long time. The State Commissioner of Police, CP Adamu Usman, is the chairman of the committee to be co-chaired by the Etunupe and chairman Niger State Council of Traditional Rulers, Alaji Aya Abubakar. Other members of the committee include the secretary to the state government, representatives of the three senatorial districts of the state, and the relevant stakeholders. Suleiman Kodogi, NTA News. And Port Harcourt is our next stop nationwide as we join Dibabari. Dibabari? and welcome to Port Harcourt. In line with the federal government's protocol on social distancing to contain COVID-19, the Nigerian Navy Secondary School Burukiri Port Harcourt has inaugurated two newly renovated hostels. Flag officer commanding Eastern Naval Command, Rear Admiral David Adeniro, represented by Commander Lua Tosin Abolanli, appealed to the students to make good use of the facilities. If I'm on Mesa reports. The 230 capacity newly renovated Otiko and Sedu Girls Hostels have been in use since the establishment of the school. Inaugurating the hostels, Flag Officer Commanding, Eastern Nava Command, Rear Admiral David Adenira, who was represented, said the renovated hostels are to provide an enabling environment for learning. The FOC has been gracious to us. They just recently approved the renovation of these two buildings to make life easier for students. They are encouraged to use it wisely, use it well. Commander Oluwatosi Abolanle noted that plans have been made to win the war against COVID-19 when the students resume fully. We had made provision for facilities for them to be able to wash their hands as often as possible. They have also provided sanitizers to some staff of the school applauded the good gesture of the flag officer towards the renovation of the hostels. Immediately they come back, we make all that space is available for them to stay for social distancing. Nigerian Navy Secondary School Port Harcourt was established in April 1994 as a boarding and comprehensive co-educational secondary school. From the Nigerian Navy Secondary School Port Harcourt, Ifoma Umisa, NC News. Citizens and community leaders in Akwa Ibom State are re-strategizing with the police to expose and crack down criminally minded persons in their communities. At a security meeting in Etimekwe local government area, the people say there would be no hiding place to commit crimes in the area. Clement Barquin reports. Their stand is clear and that is the fact that no longer will any individual commit crime and run to any part of Etimekwe, Ika. A back who can afford an Uruganam local government areas for protection. This assurance came having known that the tax of community policing has been formally handed over to them through the Etimepo local government and area command community policing advisory committees. The project, according to Aquabom State Commissioner of Police, Emoimi Edgar, will bring to an end years of the Nigeria police seeing its duties as a function and not a process that must involve the people. First thing you must expect immediately these committees start functioning is immediate reduction in crime, particularly at the grassroots and various neighborhoods all over Etimeko. We have another 
coming together to partner with the Nigeria police to ensure that peace and security are sustained. And this partnership is basically defined by accountability and respect for human rights. From Etimeko local government area, Clement Barakui, NTA News. We are done from here. For more on Nationwide, it's back to Root. Good evening. Thanks, Diva Barry. 52 housing units of the Cross River State Social Housing Scheme have been allocated to Bakasi internally displaced persons with a take-off grant of 50 million naira to support those who intend to start a small-scale business enterprise. Paul Abel reports that the inauguration of the Ayade Social Housing Estate was held at Ifyang Ayong Community, Bakasi local government area of the state. Uh, this is Akwai Korea Edem. The Bakasi returnees have settled there for over seven years and they have been living in not pleasant environment. But that story is about to change. At an occasion like this, the experience can better be imagined as beneficiaries speak. If you want to narrate the story, the challenge that we face as a woman, it would bond the the entire month. The environment is not so conducive to us. Bless the governor and bless the NTBA, bless them, everybody. The inauguration of these 52 housing units, stakeholders say, is a step towards ameliorating the sufferings of the Bakasi people whose land was ceded to Cameroon more than 10 years ago. I celebrate today because God has given me opportunity to put a smile on somebody's face. I could see a grandma dancing to her new home. There are very large two-bedroom flats, all in suits, uh, with visitor toilet. It High point of the event was the handing over of keys of apartments one after the other to beneficiaries, which evoked lots of emotion. The Bakasi people are naturally fishermen. Therefore, the location of this housing project is apt, as it affords them the opportunity to continue with their occupation. From Bakasi local government area, I am Paul Abel, NTA News. Thanks, Paul. And from Cross River State to Aquaibum, where we hear tricycle operators um, in the state take to major street in Uyo metropolis in protest of alleged extortion by tax force and security agents. Kelvin Samwa reports that the group, among other things, demands a review of their daily ticket fees and other levies to align with the current economic realities occasioned by COVID-19. The group numbering well over 500 tricycle riders defied the social distancing directive to register their displeasure over alleged extortion by security agents and tax force team, which according to them have become their nightmares. The leader of the group, Abasema Tong, who spoke on their behalf, maintained that the situation has become unbearable as they often spend all their daily earnings on either tax force or security agent only to return home with little or nothing to fend for themselves and families. They disturb us too much. They will break us and maybe you go and find change to your customer. Before you know, you don't know whether now whiskey they use and they will just drive your gate. But when a passenger does not put on the face mask, instead of them warning the, the, passenger. the passenger, they now call them. When contacted, the Commissioner of Transport and Solid Mineral Aquabom State, Uno Itum, however, assured that his ministry is doing everything possible to ensure smooth and unhindered operation of all transporters, especially through this COVID-19 pandemic. As a ministry, we have uh, distributed uh, close to uh, 10,000 face masks to all the KK riders in the state. And uh, I believe by the grace of God, we will continue to do more for them. It is the hope of the people that government and relevant stakeholders will wade into the matter in order to find lasting solution that will return normalcy to the capital city. In Uyo, Kevin Samuel, NTA News. Let's head to Kaduna to find out the latest as we join Suleiman for more on Nationwide. Suleiman. Thank you, Ruth, and welcome to Kaduna Network Center. Turning unfortunate calamity to a favorable story that spells good omen for the future of the society is a testament that the COVID-19 is not, after all, without the glimpse of beauty. 
to the hold in this report by Jamaa Adamu chronicles some ingenious responses on Nigerians that see boom through the boom of the pandemic. A stitch in time saves nine, so goes the old adage. Imagine what could have been the fate of Nigeria if the pandemonium of coronavirus pandemic that forced global shutdown had set in at the time Nigeria was heavily dependent on importation of rice to feed her populace. I think the situation uh, would have been starvation, so to say, because uh, before there was a total dependence on foreign rice and other food for local consumption. That averted crisis of hunger, job losses that could have equaled the numbers gamefully employed along the straight value chain of production, processing and market of homegrown rice, as well as the billions of dollars that would have been lost by way of forex and subsidy on importation, are issues experts believe Nigerians now take for granted. Many believe this homegrown solution to the nation's agricultural challenge has set the stage for indigenous Nigerians to venture into indigenous invention in other fields, especially the health sector where the pandemic of coronavirus has necessitated such innovations. The latest breakthroughs here in Kaduna said are these automated walk through disinfection tunnels developed by the Nigeria Defense Academy to augment the fight against the COVID-19. You, you work first by uh, sanitizing your hand. There is a point where you sanitize your hand and then it takes your body temperature and then you move on and it will spray uh, mist, uh, chemical based disinfectant and then you go. The same MD had earlier invented ventilator, a critical equipment in the treatment of patients of COVID-19. That has since been under consideration for upgrade certification and mass production. A similar accomplishment was recorded to the credit of a team of engineers from Amadou Bello University, Zaria, who invented both solar and electric power hand sanitizer and a ventilator that has been endorsed by the Nigeria Raw Material and Research Development Center. Face masks like toothpicks were before now on the exclusive list of the nation's unnecessary and avoidable importation. But the changing narrative of today are good omen for better times to come. As the saying goes, we shouldn't be great to begin. We should rather begin to be great. In Kaduna, my Jama Adamu, NTA News. Many thanks indeed, my Jama. Chigao State COVID-19 Task Force has commenced test running of molecular laboratory for suspected cases. Governor Mohamed Badaru Abakar says the laboratory is awaiting accreditation by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC. Mohamed Musa Askira reports. The molecular laboratory, according to Governor Mohammed Badru Abubakar, when accredited by the NCDC, will reduce the stress of sending test samples to faraway places and its attendant delay in receiving the test results. Having installed all the necessary facilities for testing COVID-19 patients and other contagious diseases, the molecular laboratory, according to the governor, has been test running its functionality since Monday as it awaits the accreditation of the NCDC. Speaking on the progress made so far in the fight against the novel coronavirus, Governor Mohamed Badura Abubakar stated, out of 241 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Jigao State, 151 patients have been cured and discharged, representing 51% of the state's total infection so far. You will all agree with me that this fight must continue unabated until we reach our destination a COVID-free Jigar state. While commending the frontline health workers in the state for their relentless efforts, Governor Mohamed Badura Abubakar appealed to residents in the state not to stigmatize against the cured patients of the disease. From Dute, Mohamed Musa Askira, NTN News. Nationwide continues in Abuja after the break. strong immune system increases the chances of victims surviving COVID-19. A corruption-free society creates opportunities for citizens to thrive and prosper. Build your immunity. Stop corruption now. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on this toll-free number 0800 this message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. This is a very important message. 
oppression wear your mask especially for people who don't old no forget your body no tranga like before you know even tranga like your children or your grandchildren so therefore always wear your mask for this pandemic period no they to receive visitors so even if not your grandchildren make extra mask where you go fit wash make like two and that's your number one and if they come out for house wear your mask always and if you come back wash your hand with soap and running water to avoid coronavirus make you for live long for your children and your grandchildren don't forget oppression wear your mask especially for people who don't old protect me i protect you in a coalition of societies for the right of older persons in nigeria cause dropping join body with national orientation agency noa bring on this message the number of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is increasing daily with many more tests ongoing. The battle of testing, isolating, treating and attending to the affected persons rests heavily on the shoulders of our health workers, constantly putting their lives on the line and at risk to contain this virus, save and protect the lives of millions of Nigerians. To these health workers, we at the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, on behalf of millions of Nigerians, say a big thank you for all that you have done and are doing. To the security agencies enforcing the lockdown and every other frontliner, we say thank you for putting your lives on the line to save ours. There is no amount of words that can quantify our gratitude. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Thanks for being there. Landmark legal reforms, the fight against corruption, strengthening of the justice sector to engender renewed confidence, the congestion of correctional facilities and recovery of stolen funds are among the many achievements of the five years of President Muhammad Buhari's administration in the justice sector. Head of NTS Judiciary Dex, Vera Chumoba, in this report tells us what informed the developments and what legacy judicial experts advocate to make the sector more robust. Before 2015, the judiciary in Nigeria was burdened with credibility crisis and at the inception of President Muhari's administration, he advocated a strong judiciary system to effectively fight corruption with a promise to overhaul and transform it, charting the roadmap to a dynamic justice system five years after, gave birth to justice reforms at various levels of the justice sector. The establishment of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption was the first committee set up by the President Buhari administration to drive the reform agenda. It was established to promote reform agenda on anti-corruption in the prosecution of war against corruption. Beyond recovery of looted funds, the fight against corruption has been largely successful due to diligent investigation and prosecution of cases which has sent many to jail. The Presidential Advisory Committee also trained federal and state prosecutors, reviewed existing laws, initiated whistleblower policy of the federal government, on domestic legislations and international agreements, the mutual assistance in criminal matters, an executive bill signed into law by the president in 2019, was unique. It facilitated the identification, tracing, freezing, recovery, forfeiture, and classification of proceeds of crime and prosecution of offenders. Convictions have been had in that regard with respect to cyber crimes and, and corruption cases and so on and so forth have, have been on the high side. Forfeitures that have been made uh, uh, in this uh, regime is also um, uh, something of note. But at least, if not for anything, we've seen the fact that people are now afraid that. Um, Especially politically exposed persons, they are now afraid that they can be caught. If not for anything, that fear at least has gone a long way to instill some level of of restraints to 
public officers. We've seen a lot of them. The first fundamental reform of the Nigerian Prisons Act in almost 50 years, resulting in the establishment of the Nigerian Correctional Service to replace Nigeria Prison Service. The launch and installation of the new prison information management system, a pilot project for administration of correctional service, was novel. 86 Nigerian correctional service locations across 16 states are expected to benefit from it. In a bid to decongest Nigeria's prison population, President Buhari this year granted 2,600 prisoners amnesty, accounting for 3.5% of inmates in Nigeria. Some legal experts commended the president for the achievements in the sector. However, say more can be done. If we really wants to leave a legacy, as far as the judicial uh, process is concerned, he just needs to set up an independent electoral court that is focused only on election matters. The funding of the police force is very key in the administration of criminal justice. The training and retraining of Nigerian police force is very key in the administration of criminal justice. We must understand that to strengthen judiciary is to strengthen democracy. A strong, virile judiciary is an essential requirement for the attainment of a strong democratic government. In Abuja, Viera Chumoba, NTA News. Thanks, Vera. And from the judiciary to education, lack of disruptive quick at the federal level, particularly after 2019 elections, is one notable feature that enhanced the education sector performance in the last five years. Well, the importance of this should not be lost on us, as a change in leadership would have led to a halt in the trajectory of Adamuadam. Education correspondent Rashida Mustafa Olagunju brings us up to speed with the happenings in the sector. As a result of this continuity, the Ministerial Strategic Plan 2016 to 2019 gave way to the education sector's short and medium term blueprint work plan. To ensure that where our goals stopped in 2019, it continued in 2018 to 2022 plan with an expanded scope, thereby steering Nigeria's education sector in the last five years towards a consistent improvement in access, quality, equity, carrying capacity, infrastructural and personal development, and most importantly, addressing the Almajari syndrome, which by extension would drastically reduce numbers of out-of-school children. Frequent changes of policies, some of them made without adequate preparations, have created uh, a kind of charade in the educational system. So, uh, to be fair, this administration had had to deal with what it was dealt with, the situation it had met. Other strides in the sector include approval of specialized universities, including the Federal Maritime University in Delta State and the Nigerian Army University in Borno State. Six new colleges of education, one in each geopolitical zone, transfer of Almajari schools to state government and credible scholars of Islamic education for effective administration. Several initiatives have been introduced. One of the most important, you, you will agree, is the return of history in our curriculum. This is perhaps one of the greatest disservice to our educational system. From 2015 to date, federal government has disbursed over 170 billion naira as matching grants to universal basic education as grants to state and the FCT. Government also mandated that Paris club share of state that refused to make available their counterpart fund should be channeled for that use. State and private providers also received 8 billion naira as special education grants. Another 34 billion naira was made available for teachers development fund to state and the FCT. The student teacher relationship has also improved over the years, especially with the basic education segment of the education sector. Various agencies in the sector also come up with various innovations to enhance the sector particularly the examination bodies that have a lot of measures in place to curb malpractice and fraud. Not forgetting the reduction of registration for unified tertiary matriculation examination fee from 5,000 naira to 3,500 naira. 
Noting all this, observers are of the view that a lot of mileage will be covered to push the sector a notch or two higher before the expiration of the present administration. Rashida Mustafa Olagunju, NTA News. And for more nationwide, let's join Okochukuka in Benin. Good afternoon, Ruth. Thank you for joining us. Eleven more patients who have tested negative for coronavirus have been discharged from isolation centers in Edo State. This brings the total to 69. Elizabeth Omoko has an update on situation at some screening centers in the state capital. Also allowed to exit the facilities are 1,159 suspected cases including 340 persons of interest and 819 line listed contacts that have completed the compulsory 14-day follow-up and tested negative. Two more deaths were recorded as at Saturday 30th, totaling 13 from the 262 confirmed cases. The remaining 180 active cases are being managed and responding to treatment. Since the onset of the outbreak, Edo State Government has screened over 300,000 persons. This is part of the state's government's goal to screen 80% of the state's population. Meanwhile, low turnout characterized the screening centers visited. The screening process has been going on fine. Health workers are calling for more protective kits. Is, uh, we need more of uh, the face mask because uh, more of the children, we need to give them face masks too. Most of the market women actually, they have their own speculations that uh, the, the mask we're offering them is from a particular place and they cannot use it. The capacity test, they say, is integral to the success of quick response for identification, isolation and treatment of confirmed cases. In Benin, Elizabeth Amako, NT News. Ruth is back to you for the remaining parts of Nationwide today. Thanks, Okochukuka. The Federal Safety Commission Board has, on 29th May 2020, approved the promotion of 10 Corps Commanders to the rank of Assistant Corps Marshal and 32 Deputy Corps Commanders to the rank of Corps Commander. The approval was subsequent to the virtual meeting of the FRSC Board on promotion of senior officers, where the promotion exercise was diligently deliberated upon. A statement by the Deputy Corps Public Education Officer, Imcham Sambo, said the promotion takes effect from 29th May 2020, while urging the newly promoted officers to be more committed to the duties, the board chairman Malam Bukhari Bello says the promotion exercise is part of the commission's drive towards rewarding excellence and hard work in line with the administrative philosophy of the present leadership of the Corps. Court Marshal Dr. Boboye Oyemi also charged the officers to put in their best in the course of their duties as their new ranks call for more focus and dedication. Let's talk sports. Stakeholders advise 11-man committee set up by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development on the National Sports Festival Edo 2020 to ensure safety of athletes and officials. Gifts George has more on sports update. Sports administrators charged 11-man committee set up to decide the fate of the National Sports Festival at 2020 to do a thorough job by working with all the stakeholders in ensuring that all necessary facilities are in place while the officials of the NCDC are also involved to ensure the safety of the athletes and officials before new dates are suggested for the sports festival. Whatever they are recommending, they should make sure that everything will be 